Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies, and in this episode, we're going to talk about a fast and easy way to paint horses. As long as there's been miniature art, the horse has been involved. People and horses have a close relationship, with the horse being ranked up there alongside man's best friend. Unsurprisingly then, understanding how to paint horses is a pretty useful skill for a miniaturist. Painting horses is an even bigger deal for miniature wargamers. Even if your game of choice is set in the 41st millennium, there are still horses, or at least something similar, that you'll find in the model range. Now, I play World War II and Napoleonic themed games myself, and you bet there's always a large number of horses on the table and sitting on my painting desk. Despite the important nature of horses though, over the years I've noticed a general dislike for painting mounts by most wargamers. And truthfully, I understand this. Frequently, after spending hours preparing the rider, I would rather call the model done than press on for a few hours more to do the horse. When you think of it, when you're painting cavalry or similar mounted models, you really are painting two models to get one on the board. You have the rider, then the mount, and usually the techniques and products used to paint each of them are quite different. Despite this, in the end, the two different models are going to be glued together and used as one unit in your game or diorama. Whether you like it or not though, at some point you're going to have to paint horses. The key of course is having a plan and a workable method. What I'm going to demonstrate in this video is my method for painting horses and other similar mounts quickly. Notice I say quickly, not super fast or instantly or anything like that. Over the years, I've noticed that there is no way to take a shortcut when it comes to painting. Instead, I've refined a method that is speedy but still looks good. A kind of trade-off between getting the model prepared and having it look like, well, a horse. Now, I must point out that this method is not for display quality work, though you could probably modify it to suit. Instead, it's to get your cavalry on the table quickly, so you can start rolling dice. So, sit back and check out my method for painting horses quickly. One thing you need to consider before we get into the details is that I know pretty much nothing about horses. The methods I have built here are from a painter's perspective and not based on anything in reality. So if some of the markings or color schemes are not quite right, you'll have to forgive me. As always, after assembly, I undercoat the horse black. In this case, I'm using the Perry Miniatures French Napoleonic Cuirassier set. These are great models. Please note that I've prepared the rider and horse separately. I don't suggest you paint them as one unit. I've tried this in the past and I was never happy with the result. So if you're new to this, you can just learn from my pain. After undercoating, I usually select a batch of colors to set up a basic color scheme for a, a group of horses. I usually do six horses at a time in three different colors. The schemes I usually use are the following. For gray horses, I start with a base color of Panzer Dark Gray. Then I go to a mid-tone of Panzer Gray mixed with Light Gray in a 50-50 mix. Then I dry brush the whole thing with Medium Sea Gray 
And lastly, I highlight with medium C gray with white added. For tan horses, I use a base color of NATO brown mixed with UK light stone. Then for midtone, I apply UK light stone over top and then dry brush with Iraqi sand. Lastly, I follow up with a top highlight of Iraqi sand mixed with white. For brown horses, I start with a base color of NATO brown. Then I apply a mid-tone of NATO brown mixed with UK light stone. After this, I dry brush with light stone mixed with deck tan. And finally, I highlight with deck tan. Later on, we'll be following up with some shading washes and enamels, but more on this later. Also, you should take these colors as just a small sampling of the possibilities. You can of course mix and match them and create whatever color of horses you see fit. After working out these colors, I start by airbrushing on the base color. I apply it generally, allowing the black primer to show through in the lower areas and creases. If you don't have an airbrush, multiple layers of a heavy dry brush will work though I suggest you invest in an airbrush to make your life a lot easier. Once this layer has dried, I move on to the mid-tone. This I apply more carefully, spraying more densely on the upper surface and onto the major muscle groups of the horse. For this part, I often turn the air pressure down to about 15 psi or so from where I usually spray, which is about 24 PSI. Again, if you don't have an airbrush, a couple of layers of a light dry brush will do. Next is a dry brush of, well, the dry brush highlight. I try to make this as subtle as possible. This further builds the contrast between the upper surface and the major muscle groups along with the shadowed areas. When this is dried, I finally move on to the top highlight. Because the horse itself is usually more of a smooth and rounded shape than most models, I try to keep the highlight subtle and trace the major muscle groups or anything that forms a hard edge on the horse. A good example would be along the line of the eye socket. This step is probably the most time consuming and requires a fine brush, but it's important. If you don't build the exaggerated contrast, the model will look flat and lose visual interest from the viewer's perspective. Speaking of contrast, after the highlights and dry brushing, the horse will appear a little chalky and pastel. This is normal, and now we need to unify the colors. My favorite way to do this is with Army Painter shader washes, usually either soft tone or strong tone. I just go ahead and brush these on straight out of the bottle. I tend to vary the colors when I apply the washes, especially for the lighter tan horses. If I apply strong tone, they come out more on the brown side. If I use soft tone, they stay generally lighter. Since horses tend to vary in appearance, I switch this stage up between individual horses and sometimes combine the two shaders to create more variety. Then I leave all the models to dry. For gray or even white horses, shaders don't really work to unify the colors, so I use an old fashioned paint wash. I take the mid-tone color, water it down until it's cloudy, and paint it back over the work. When it dries, the color gradient and chalkiness will be fixed. Somewhat. The Army Painter shaders always do this in one coat, while the paint washes may take several thin layers to avoid tide marks and to get the desired effect. Stick with it and practice though. You'll get it in time. Just remember, more thin layers are better than one thick one. Next, I usually begin work on the saddles and other gear. 
I won't cover this specifically, as these techniques are usually identical to painting the riders. Also, there's a huge variety of subjects where this is concerned. My Napoleonic horses might have colorful livery. Fantasy horses could have barding, while sci-fi space horses could even have uh, lots of skulls, I guess. One thing that does bear mentioning is the tack, like bridles and reins. These things tend to be mostly black, and very small and fiddly to paint. Since I recommend a black undercoat, I usually find that you can do a quick layer of really dark gray, like German gray, and then maybe a highlight of medium gray, maybe like London gray, and then you can be done with the reins. This brings us to the markings on the horse. For the sake of speed, I keep this to a minimum. I usually block in a few patches with deck tan, and I put this on the horse's faces and sometimes above the hooves. Then I do a second layer with white in the middle of each marking and on the raised areas like the musculature. Tails and manes are pretty straightforward, and since they're usually heavily textured, they can get a light brown or gray dry brush. At this point, the horses are nearing completion, and all you need to do is rebuild the definition by lining in. For this process, I always recommend enamel panel liner. Before you apply this product though, first you need to protect your work. At this point, I usually apply two layers of satin or gloss varnish. This layer is mainly to promote the capillary action to draw the enamel shader into the depths and around the fine details on the model. Use the applicator provided in the bottle and deposit the enamel into the creases and around the detail on the model. Watch the capillary action do the rest as it draws the shader exactly where it needs to go. This process is fast, accurate, and looks really good. Once the enamel dries, you're pretty much finished. You can add a layer of matte varnish to reduce the shine and do some scenic effects on the base. I cover basing in another video and I'll put the link above. And with this, your horses are done. Now you have a method that's not too intensive that produces good results and gets your horses and other mounted models on the games table or in your diorama quickly. You don't need to put off or worry about tackling horses for your games anymore. Give this method a try and see how it works for you. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is your source for miniature, terrain building, and diorama content. And we can't do it without your support. We want to build a community to ensure that the wonderful art of building a miniature is accessible to everybody. To participate, please consider joining on Patreon. For $4 a month, our Patreon members benefit from 10% off at Joe Saunders Terrain in the Etsy store, 5% off paints and hobby supplies at Torchlight Games, free access to STL files, a mention in our credits, and early access to our videos. Please check it out and consider joining. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please remember to subscribe, press the bell button so you get immediate notification on our videos, and until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.